Hello and welcome to a Krita tutorial. I'm Rio Force, and this is a tutorial about Krita because that's the program we're using. Yay! Okay, um, this is how to animate in Krita. I'm going to teach you um, how the new animation tools are in are in Krita and how you can use them to animate in Krita, basically. So to start, you create a new image like this one, this one right here. This is a brand new image. I clicked file, of course, new, yeah, 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 1080p. There we go, there we go, new image. You go over to the top right, right there. It says, it's got a little drop down menu thing. Click it, click animation, click, there we go. Now we're on this animation window. It looks new, it looks different. The sidebar is on the left. I don't know why. For preferably, I I changed it. I moved everything around because you can adjust the toolbars up in settings dockers. I changed everything around and made my own personal thing. Ba ba. Right there. Looks more like Photoshop. Looks more like how I'm used to. Looks more like the default Krita interface, you know, with the stuff on the right instead of on the left. So that's great, but for now I'm gonna stick with the animation, built-in preset animation window interface. So, to start with, um, I'm going to explain what these windows are. So of course here is your toolbox, your color selector, your color sliders, your advanced color selector, your layers, your tool options. They don't have brush presets here, you'll have to add that yourself. Um, but here's the important part, the animation area. Animation, this is your frame number, what current frame you're on. So 0, 1, 2, 9, 12, 15, whatever. It corresponds with this timeline down here, of course, because this is where the frames are. This is the play. It plays from 0 to 100, then it loops. Next frame, next keyframe, which we don't have any drawn yet, and end frame, which is frame 100. And start frame, you know, etc. This is the new frame button. Creates a new frame, pop, blank frame, just a blank white frame, or blank transparent. The um, the late the timeline corresponds per layer. So this one you see has a keyframe here and here. This one has no frames at all. Um, so what you have to do is uh, animate each layer. I'm gonna animate on this transparent layer so that way the background is still white. This is the copy frame button, which we'll get into that in a minute. This is the remove frame button. Of course, they have drop down arrows, whatever. Um, this has auto frame mode on. I don't know what that is. Oh yeah, I know what that is. And the crop frames, I drop frame rather. Drop frames, I'm pretty sure drops frames when playing so that it's a smooth playback. I, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I haven't had any issues with that because my computer plays all the frames, but um, that's very useful if you have a lot of frames and you want to line it up with audio or something or just see how long it is. Um, and if you have a lot of frames, it'll lag, but drop frames, it drops the frames so that it doesn't lag. You'll, of course, miss some frames in your preview, but um, you can at least see what the pacing is and stuff. But to get started, so um, we're going to right click. This is how I like to do it, or this button right here, new frame, or right click on the timeline, new frame, boom. Got a brand new frame. So I am going to, actually I'm gonna go back to this white background layer, draw a line like, like that. And I'm going to go back to this layer and animate on this one because the background, just like in traditional animation, you want to have background plates because that way you don't have to redraw your background every time. Super useful. I think I'm actually gonna draw a cactus. Let's see. There we go, look at there. Now it's the desert. And I'm gonna draw a sun. There we go. Now we have a nice desert. Um, <laughs> and and for this uh, scene, I'm going to, I'm gonna just animate a simple, um, let's see, a, a, a ball bounce, a ball bounce. So it's going to go um, just as any any ball bounce should, 
It's going to follow a path, a path like this. It's sort of a V path. Boing. But I'm not going to keep the path because I don't need the path to animate. But if you want to, it's a super useful thing to draw your path like that. And then, uh, you know, I'm going to make it half transparent along with that so I can see what I'm... No, not that one. I'm going to make it, you know, sort of invisible so I can look at what I'm doing. And we're going to start. So I have this zero frame. It's blank. I'm going to draw a, a ball. I'm going to draw it in a different color, actually, because that makes way more sense. So I'm going to draw this ball like there. I don't know why I'm being... There we go. Um, then I'm going to... I mean, I could go straight ahead with the animation. So these are two principles of animation. I'm not teaching the principles of animation here. I'm just teaching you how to animate. Um, one way is to go straight ahead. Just go to the next frame. Draw the next frame like that. And then keep going until you just do all of them in order. Or the way that that traditional animation is better um, is the way that is, you're supposed to do it, I guess. I prefer it anyway. Is you go skip ahead, I don't know, four frames, then draw the next keyframe. Oh, but wait, now we have two balls on the screen. Well, that's not right. Let's erase one of them. There we go. And if you've noticed, it created an automatic new frame. Just by clicking over here and drawing, it's a brand new frame. Now, I just noticed something. The background plate, uh, I don't know why, why, but, oh, wrong one. Oh, that's why. <laughs> this frame is a white frame. On the background plate, we're gonna delete that because it kills my background. And delete that too because, no, wait, no. <laughs> I keep that one. Anyway, uh, so the way to do it, there are some options in the right click menu. You right click, new frame. It creates a blank frame, blank. Or um, you right click on the blank frame, let's say, or on the on on the one beside the new frame, a frame like this one. Right click, copy frame. It copies the same frame, so you can draw on it. So blank, blank two. Or just by clicking over into the area which doesn't have a frame without even right clicking or anything. You can just start drawing on the frame. Blank three. That's not a good three. And it automatically copies the frame to it. Um, you know, that has nothing to do with the ball animation, so I'm going to delete that. There we go. Right click, remove frame. Just as easy. Of course, Control Z undoes. Delete key does not remove the frame, it uh, deletes everything on the frame, which is interesting. So. Right now I have zero, four, uh, I'm gonna go to that one there, eight. I'm going to continue drawing the frame, so erase. I like to erase first. Uh, and now what? We, um, I have no idea where to draw the ball now. Not a problem. Turn on onion skinning. This button is the onion skin options button. As you can see, there's a sort of a scale here, and I've already adjusted it. Um, but nothing we do here changes anything. Well, that's not a problem. Click this little light bulb icon down by layer two or whatever this uh, by the animation. Click. There we go. Now, as you'll notice, we have this and this. Those are our other two frames. So this ball, the, the stretched one, lines up with frame four, but it has negative one here. This means it goes back one keyframe, two keyframes, three keyframes, and etc. And forward one keyframe, two, three. So if I go, say, to frame four, and have something on this frame here, go to frame four, it'll show the next frames, the one keyframe, two keyframe, etc., in this green color, and the previous frames in this red color. And you can change the opacity, of course, as you wish. So, you know, I can make it solid, almost solid, or I can make it not exist or almost invisible. And to turn it off, you just toggle it with these buttons here. There we go. And pressing zero turns off all of the uh, onion skinning completely in the options. So that's super useful, especially when drawing frames. But now, back to this one. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and continue drawing keyframes, I guess. And we're going to complete out this animation so we can see what it looks like. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna draw sort of a squished frame. Go here, erase that again. Of course, if I don't want to erase, I can right click new frame. There we go. It's a lot easier than erasing, especially for just a, such a simple scene like this. Then I'm uh, going to draw sort of a stretched frame here and here. Let's new frame again. And new frame last, the last frame, which is going to be sort of this one. There we go. And then we're going to make a new frame because it's going to be blank. So as you can see, if I turn off onion skinning, if I click play, we have an animation and it keeps going. So I'm going to, going to set this last frame right here as 22. This is not a smooth animation. Of course, it's just, uh, it's just keyframes. So we're going to in between it and we can because um, we can go back and draw in between frames. So these are keyframes and you turn on onion skinning. We can see this area between um, between right there. This is where I'm going to draw the one, two, three, four, the three in between frames right there. I used to undo that. So let's go ahead and draw. I'm going to make a new frame. Boom. Draw an easing frame like that. Next. The, this handy new frame button here is is good. New frame, sort of draw in between there. Then new frame, sort of make it sort of start stretching here. Boop boop, new. Here we go. Oops, I did not click new frame. That's yeah. You got to remember to click that. There we go, new frame. Oh, and look at all these. It's so complicated now. I can't tell which which is frame is the next frame. So, simple fix. There we go. Turn on, turn off two. So now we can only see one future frame, which is the green one right there. Sort of make it land there. More like that, I think. Nope, like like uh like that. Boop boop. There we go. Now it's going to sit there for a second before it launches off. Or actually, it's sort of squishing. That's the action. So it sort of sits there, sort of gradually starts squishing. New. There we go. Boop, boop. Then we're going to keep going. With, and it, it's You've noticed it started launching all of a sudden. So I need to make sort of a, a a next frame, which is sort of in between the squish and the launch. Then we're going to go again and again, new frame in between for there. Next, next. And here's where, uh, oops, whoa, I didn't want to. Okay. Yeah, that's good. I thought I replaced my frame. We're going to keep going, Just sort of adding in betweens here and here. Next, next, and there, and there, there, and one more. I think that'll do like, like, uh, that. So there we go. And then it goes blank. So turn off keyframing, click play, or actually hide the arc because I don't need that anymore. Click play, boing, boing, boing. Okay. Well, the animation isn't the best. It's kind of. It sticks on the ground a little bit too long than I wanted it to. But again, we're not here for the principal's animation. I was just teaching you how to make an animation. Um, and one more thing, which is a super new um, addition to Krita, which you want to try out. It's super fast. Click this little button here and it adds audio. It's so hidden though. Look right there, little tiny button. Click open audio. Click the audio you want. If you, you, it doesn't show waveforms, sadly. Oops, I moved my frames. It doesn't show waveforms yet, but you can scrub. So I'm going to turn off this music here. Listen, if you hear it, did you hear that? Oops, I didn't turn off my music. Listen. So if you, you know, if you're following a script or whatever, you can scrub on the timeline. It'll show waveforms. And uh, if you click play, 
It plays it plays the audio as you as your uh as you're animating. There we go. And that's about it for animating in Krita. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um please like and stuff. Okay, and that's about it. Um goodbye everybody.